Hello everybody, and welcome back to more Jisenjo no Mao with me, Phantoms Y. So last episode, a good bit we had happening. Uh, Usami met up with Gonzo, we found out that uh, Kanan's mother, Ikiko, is being threatened through Gonzo that, uh, hey, if Kanan uh, enters into the uh, the competition, or is it is it she wins? I don't remember, either way. Uh, but her mother's gonna die, or gonna be killed. Obviously, that threat was sent by Mao. So Mao is back on the hunt, and Kyosuke is involved with him yet again, along with Usami, of course. And so, let's hop right into it. Due in part to the winter chill, my body was as stiff as a rock, as if it refused to move. Yeah, if you hadn't come to get me today, I would have skipped for sure. And why are you even you even here, Eiji? He had one hand on Cannon's shoulder, and their height difference was making him panic a little. Oh god, no. Hold it right there. It's too early for your stupid antics. Eiji puffed out his chest and stuck his chin up in the air when Cannon called him coach. How did this happen? Whoops. Okay. Turn my phone down. About what? Hmm. So, what I gather from this is that those two talk on the phone regularly. <laughs> Falling apart from the start, huh? Oh, you guys are silly. Aichi continued his lecture. Now very textbook, again. <laughs> wow. <laughs> H.E. seemed to be, a wa uh, to be waxing poetic. Like every morning, Cannon was lying motionless on her desk. Eiji glared at me with furious indignation. Well, you gotta hand it to her. She's pretty damn good at disregarding other people's advice. Oh, please. Cannon's mother is her coach. What did I tell you about putting your face so close to mine? Huh? What are you talking about? Hmm? Really? My memory may be fragmented, but I'll be damned if Ken wasn't getting a lot of attention recently because of the rarity of having her mother coach her. <laughs> Wait, but doesn't Canon call ikiko san uh, doesn't she call Mama Coach? Aichi sighed contemptuously. Uh, alright. I get it, I get it. She's no longer her coach, but they can't just up and get rid of her. Wow, Ikiko sure has it hard. Her job was suddenly stolen from her. Is there a financial reason behind this? Well, I suppose it doesn't matter. 
Is this George Washington guy all he's cracked up to be? Man, her coach is the president of the fucking United States of America. Shut up. I get it, I get it. He's so amazing, etc, etc. <laughs> anyway, if Cannon's under this guy's wing, then everything will be fine, right? Then aren't you completely useless? Me? Eiji pointed at the spot between my eyes. I am interested. Seriously, man, I am interested. Who doesn't like watching pretty girls figure skate around the ice? <laughs> uh... Oh, you two. I know, I know. The Grand Prix of this figure skating... of figure skating is more about the prize money and not about the title. H's lecture continued straight through to noon. For some reason, Usami had enrolled in our studies. And then, at the end of the year, they hold the Japan Championships to determine the best in Japan. Eiichi <coughs> acted irritated, as if the problem was his. I didn't log off of Steam again. Let's do it now. Here we go. I have a really bad habit about forgetting to do that. では、例えばグランドシリーズファイナルで優勝しても関係ないんですね。昨日も言ったけど、一応考えるみたいな曖昧なことになってるみたいだよ。と言いますと確か全国大会で1位と2位の選手の得点差が1位の選手の10%以内
What did that sponsor do? A rumor? So there's no evidence. That's enough. Is this scandal still going on? I may be forgetful myself, but it's still shocking how quickly society can forget these things. Cannon chimed into our conversation. え、また高知国続いてたの。続いてるよ。君がその手に五輪をつかむまでね。もう飽きたよ。飽きるの早すぎるんだよ。君には集中力ってものが。4分は持つから大丈夫だよ。Four minutes. The duration of a free skate, right? ジャンプ上手いけどステップシークエンスはどうなの？それはおいおい。おいおいじゃないよ。こっちがおいおいだよ。だって今の最低方式だったらジャンプができれば他でちょっとミスしても平気だもん。だから極端に言えば彼女は
えっと自分はこんな髪型でも<笑>風呂には毎日入っていまして。ガンソー didn't speak and my spine was frozen。あの、頭くせえとか言われるヒロインじゃないんで。Usami looked terrified, but she was talking in her usual manner. In the end, Gonzo just said, I don't know why, but he said it in a whisper. There's a hint of a smile at the corner of his mouth. からのそこじゃ極道なんて少しも怖くないって面だな。それは目線を外しているように相手の様子をさ。それが勝負。お前はついさっき俺が隠した拳銃の場所を知っている。え、え、え。後ろの棚が気になる。Now that he mentions it. I heard the sound of a drawer closing before we entered. Usami froze for an instant, then straightened her posture. She squeezed out a low voice, one completely different from what she had used up until now. Gonzo nodded and retrieved a brown envelope from his jacket pocket, slapping it down on the table. Usami picked it up. There was no deep meaning behind her spoken word. It was simply the small word of, that was written at the back of the envelope. She took a white letter out of the already opened envelope. To the monster and my beloved hero. I suspect there will be many victims. As long as Azai Cannon aims for the Olympics. I released a certain murderer into the wild. Let's call him Mephistopheles. That's the devil who appears in the play Faust. That creates a connection with Goeth. Gothi? I don't know. This is all over my head. It's far too sophisticated. He already took the life of an unfortunate man last night. Those around Cannon will continue to meet their end one by one. Cannon's mother, in particular, will not be an exception from the murder list. If you intend to lend your ears and heed my warning, force her to throw the upcoming NHK trophy. Otherwise, a new sacrifice will be taken at 9 o'clock, the night of the last day. One piece of advice. I doubt I need to worry, but in the event that you inform the state of this, my retaliation will be severe and relentless. P.S. I use those stock certificates as tissues. Mao. Damn. I lowered my head and finished reading alongside Usami. I used those stock certificates as tissues. That's just a taunt right there. As Usami said, the letters are all crooked. It was like a small child had written it. It was messy, full of peculiarities, and even gave off an, uh, a bit of an eerie feeling. Usami's point was interesting. A lot of attention will be paid to the calligraphy of a threat letter. Normally, you'd think he would glue down newspaper clippings or type it on a computer, anything to cover up his handwriting. But even then, if the police looked into it deeply, wouldn't they be able to uncover some kind of a trend? Utsami sank into silence, knitting her brows. Anyway, from the contents of the letter, has someone already been killed? Pardon? 
How did he die? Did Mao push him? She spoke up in a small voice. Usami typed the letter with her finger. In the event that you inform the state of this, Ah. That means Mao has some sort of political ideal, and there's a chance that he belongs to such an organization. About what? Watson-esque, nice. I have no idea what Watson-esque means, so I'll just say whatever. Well, could it be that Mao hasn't received any higher education? For instance, isn't the punctuation strange? I point to the sentence that sparked my reasoning, the one with the comma in the middle of the sentence. He already took comma, the life of an unfortunate man last night. Can his mother in particular, comma, or will, comma, not be an exception from the murder list? Here, wouldn't it have been easier to read if it were last night, comma, he took the life of an unfortunate man? Hmm. Can his mother in particular, will, comma, not be an exception from the murder list? This part's just bizarre. Shouldn't it be can his mother, comma, in particular, comma, will not? Also, Lend your ears and heed. I've never heard anyone speak like that. This girl irritates me somehow. Aren't you bad at it too? That's a terrible argument. Gonzo passed a piece of paper from the shelf behind him to Usami. It's a long list. The notes included the designer that had already died, Ikiko-san, Coach Hilton, the choreographer, the staff from the competition. It's because we're close to her. If you're not careful, you might be next. Naturally, Gonzo's name was on the list as well. Of all the names listed there, Ikiko-san is the only one that we know will be targeted. Gonzo agreed to Usami's request. She picked it up with a handkerchief carefully and put it into an empty folder in her bag. I said my goodbye along with Usami. She turned around. There are two more tournaments between now and then. Usami lifted an eyebrow, surprised. Just like yesterday, Usami was following me. You aren't scared of Gonzo, are you? Don't play dumb. You were just pretending to be scared. Are penguins frozen while they carry eggs? Usami 
襲いかかってこないというか、利害関係が一致している限りでは、心強い味方だなと思いました。I hold a similar viewpoint. それはともかく、アザイさん。She suddenly stopped. What do I think? I considered it for a second. Well, we're talking about a pre murder notice here. I guess I'm mainly worried, just worried about Cannon. It's a place near the arena. Why do you ask? I'm not sure. I don't think she's entirely unconcerned about it, but she's never mentioned it before. I, uh, I don't think she knows. Or maybe she just doesn't care. You too, Usami. Well, when you put it that way, I lost my words. Yeah, someone has already died. If you secretly went to the police, Mao and Gonzo would both snap. I shrugged. Hey, look on the bright side. The Mafia doesn't need a search warrant or anything. Without all the red tape or the police, of the police, they can mobilize and go into action a lot quicker. Usami flashed a wry smile. We arrived at my apartment as we talked. You can't let Cannon know about this, no matter what. If she knew that her mother was in trouble, it would affect her performance for sure. I think so. Was it the NHK trophy that's coming up, or the day, af uh, the day after tomorrow? Usami nodded lightly. Her back slumped, and she walked away. After taking a bath, I sat in front of the computer. Strange things have been happening ever since Usami transferred here. Oh come, lovely child. Oh come thou with me, for many a game I will play there with thee. Just when was that mysterious email sent to me? For some reason, I feel like I've been getting too many visitors at night recently. Is it Tsubaki? That music. Cannon. Her big eyes were glittering. But for Cannon to show up now of all times. Whatever. I'll just let her in for now. She came in without a single sign of courtesy. Have you been here before? Oh, wait, I remember. Why are you even here? The competition's coming up in two days. A shocked expression snapped through Cannon's face. Now that she mentions it, I've never had much interest until now. Just when was the last time that I saw her compete? Don't stare at me like that. She has some really scary intuition. Don't say something so stupid. Did you come here just to ask me retarded questions? She said it like it was nothing. What? Are you serious? Why? I felt another headache coming on. There's only one bed. I just said there was only one. Listen to yourself. Now just how can I put it in a way that Cannon would understand? Isn't it important for you to be in your best condition before the competition? From now on? Wait. 
I said wait. Wait, damn it! What do you mean from now on? Are you seriously planning on sleeping here from now on? Your blood type's B, isn't it? Now that's a shocking re revelation. <laughs> Look, can't you go somewhere else? You can thank that calamitous personality of yours for that one. What about Aichi? She looked sincerely troubled for a moment. What, did you... I'm getting a little worried. Did you have a fight with Ikiko-san and ran away as a result? That so-called clash between athlete and coach. She's starting to piss me off. I... I just tell her to go home, or I can't say no to her. Obviously, we are going to get on the cannon route. Uh, given that that is the, you know, next route in the game, so I just can't say no to her. We're just gonna be the, uh, the easy target. I get it. Good night. I deliberately sighed in front of her. <sighs> Casually, maybe even a little slovenly, she laughed. Hmm? Uneasy? Pressure? Is she simply lonely? There's one thing I should tell you. I stared firmly at Cannon's unwavering smile. You must never go into the study. Got it? She didn't ask for any particular reason. Cannon couldn't care less about things that don't interest her. It's like she's trying to make more time for herself by forgoing... Excuse me, forgoing the trivial things. Well, it looks like things are going to start getting pretty bizarre around here. Chapter 3! Cannon had promised not to disturb me, so I wasn't expecting to be so rudely awakened so early in the morning. She's already changed. It's only 5.30. Some of us are trying to sleep here. How about using a little consideration, huh? There's still some pasta left over from last night. She sure is loud. Damn it, now I'm wide awake. Cannon interrogated me as she loaded pasta onto a plate. What do you mean? It had to do with work. I can't even remember who it was. Did it keep you from sleeping? Oh, good. Shut up and eat. This is the first time in a while that I've cooked you food. Are you seriously not going to eat it? Are you sure about that? You're not just using my bad memory to deceive me. You're not nice to them either. Don't bother, I'm not hungry. <laughs> I just woke up. My stomach isn't feeling too good. <laughs> what a noisy morning. No problem. No thank you, milady. <laughs> Why is it that every time I try to crack an innocent little joke, I just get made fun of? 
That's a scary thing to say. Mm. You are a celebrity after all. You should be aware of your status. Her eyes shot open. No, it's not like that. It's just that you're an attention grabber, so it's natural for them to stare at you. I understand. I'll tell Papa about it. Guess that guy's already dead. <laughs> Alright, look. I'll walk you to Central Boulevard, and you can take a cab from there. After Cannon got in the cab, I finally let out a breath. God damn it. I can't stand this anymore. My headaches are just getting more frequent, too. Ugh. Why did I come to Central Boulevard again? Right. I had a therapy appointment with Dr. Akimoto. Am I alright? It was still early, so I wasted some time reading a newspaper in a cafe. Dr. Akimoto was sitting in front of me, wriggling his ob obese body. I didn't sleep much last night. Well, my sister came to stay with me in the middle of the night. It seems that question was somehow important. Sure. I went along with it, rather uninterested. Dr. Akimoto leaned towards me. I think we were talking about my first love. He gave a smug smile. Can we avoid that subject? I turned my face away. Sweat coated my hands and I tightly gripped the glass that he passed to me. What? I hate that joking attitude of his. I'm trying not to think about that anymore. I wouldn't be able to go on otherwise. What do you mean, that's true? My lips were quivering. Are you really a famous doctor? Can you seriously treat patients with this provocative attitude? Yet Akimoto was very uh, calm. This fucker. You're absolutely right. So why don't we just give this up and just chat? What makes you bring that up? I finally realized that he had completely he completely had the upper hand in the conversation. Look, I know next to nothing about my father. I don't want to know. In my ears, these words were Dr. Akimoto reprimanding me. In my heart, I heard his screams calling me an un unfilial son. Not even once. My heart was beating too fast to support life. No, I did go once with mother when I was a child, but I didn't say anything. I was silent. I stopped talking and made an effort to freeze my heart. My mind wandered back to the beautiful snow dancing beyond the window of that dilapidated home my mother and I once lived in together. I lingered there until the cold of my memory had numbed my heart entirely. And then, there'd be no point in asking. Hmm? Why would I need to know what drove my father to kill four people? For the first time, Akimoto's loose expression broke. Because... I was smiling. However, I don't need to ask him to know the answer. I understand why he did it. No. I'm the only one who truly understands. If I didn't, his actions would have been in vain. Akimoto furrowed his brow. There were people who needed to die. And he just followed through. No, you and your ilk are the ones who are wrong. But I won't say anything more. 
Trying to explain my father's innocence to you all would accomplish nothing. I'll show you firsthand. All you have to do is watch. Akimoto suddenly stood up. There was a clear shade of confusion in his eyes. Oh? But we aren't even 20 minutes into the session. That's great to hear. I waved my hand and casually walked away. Well, that was, uh, intense. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? School's so serene. Don't I do that all the time? Eiji was having the time of his life. Oh ho! Huh? Won't she just throw them away and go on with her life? Yeah? What happened a couple of weeks ago? Oh yeah, yeah. The time we stole the keys? Oh please. No matter how you want to skew things, you dug your own grave with that one. Even though there was no way that he'd be able to come up with anything, he still acted like he was thinking hard. <laughs> Hello Shiratori, that was sudden. It's really rare to see Shiratori on the roof. Yo, Shiratori. The incident about the school seems to have calmed down a bit. By the incident, I mean the incident in which Shiratori's father, the director of the school, was suspected by both society and the police of accepting bribes. How can you not be interested in that? When she says Azai-san, she probably doesn't mean me, but Canon. What about Canon? She glared at me. <笑><笑><笑><笑><笑> Maybe she simply finished with her questions, but Shiratori turned around and left. Hey, wait! What did you want to go for? She didn't even turn her head around. Damn, what's our problem? Eiichi and I sulked under the cold sky. Well then, what time should I get there tomorrow? Tomorrow's the shortest program, right? Throw the upcoming NHK trophy. I watched AG leave and remembered the threat letter. There's no way she'll lose. After all, Cannon has no idea that the letter even exists. Gonzo must have reinforced the protection around Ikiko-san. And what's Utsami up to? I made up my mind and gave her a call, but no one answered. What should I do? How can I stop Mao's violent acts? It still doesn't really feel like uh, any danger is approaching. Maybe my determination to catch Mao just isn't as strong as that of Gonzo or Usami. Even though one person has already been killed, my sense of justice hasn't been provoked. Maybe I'd only feel uneasy if someone near me were hurt. 
Yet if it really came to that, it would already be too late. All right. I think that is where we are going to end today's episode, just in case the next scene is exceedingly long. Um, but yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. As always, I hope to see you next time.